Hello everyone, uh, thanks for uh, being here um, and in the next 25 minutes I would like to take you through a journey. Um, so as, as we already said, this is the second time that I have the honor of speaking at this event. So I would like to build up on, uh, on the last uh, event. The next 25 minutes will be about um, the journey that we, uh, that we basically the, the, the product journey and the agile journey that we did in eBay uh, as, a, as a business, uh, plus some, of course, I mean, consideration on how can you scale up should you scale up and which are the risks related to that. And the final slide is, um, is something that I am testing with, my, with some of my teams, which is what they call fractal uh, uh, OKRs. Um, if you know me, you know that I'm a big fan of OKRs, uh, but I will be uh, giving you uh, some information in, in a few minutes. Uh, before jumping into the proper presentation, let's pay the corporate tax of who is <laughs> Gumtree. Uh, so Gumtree is, uh, you should know Gumtree, I mean, of course, I mean, guys, I'm from Italy and I know Gumtree, so you should be, you should know Gumtree as well. Um, uh, so Gumtree is part of a, a big company, which is called ECG, uh, eBay Classifieds Group. Uh, of course, it's, it's a, a, a company owned by eBay. Uh, ECG uh, spread across I mean, the whole planet, basically, uh, starting from Canada uh, with the Kijiji brand, uh, Italy, where I joined initially in 2011 uh, with the Kijiji brand again. Gumtree brand is in the UK, South Africa, and Australia. And then we have many other brands in the Netherlands, uh, Germany, Belgium, uh, Singapore, Taiwan. Uh, I mean, again, thir 13 geographies. If you jump on our Slack, we have people basically on every time zone of the planet. Um, and the mission is, is just one, connecting buyers and sellers uh, in the classified business. So uh, eBay marketplaces uh, is, is, is the e-commerce. Um, I mean, I would say that is, 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 is where the e-commerce somehow started. And, and uh, classified is where the connection between buyers and sellers uh, happens through classifieds. So uh, the journey starts with a very lame question. So do you need Agile? Uh, and um, this is not, a, I mean, a, a question that, that the answer you should give for granted. Because when I joined in 2011 in Italy, uh, Agile was, I mean, was, the, was not there at all. And it was not there in, in eBay or in ECG uh, in general. So we had uh, a quarterly planning and then the, the, the leadership team was creating a quarterly roadmap. Like you have project A, project B and project C and see you in three months. And we're expecting you to deliver that. Of course, I'm, 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 I'm creating a little narrative ar around that, but it's not really that far from that. Um, so the first thing that we did uh, as a leadership team was starting to design a different way of working together using Agile and using the Spotify model. I think that now, no, nowadays, is, no one is actually referring to it as a Spotify model, but is what they call the cross-functional model. And I will be giving you some um, insights in a bit. The important piece that I would like to um, point out here, you need to have uh, the business, uh, um, I mean, backing you when you jump on this new way of doing things. And it's exactly what you said. I mean, the business needs to buy in into your new way of working, whatever your, way, your new way of working is. Otherwise, you'll fail big time because, because it's always about expectations. I mean, if the business is expecting something and you are saying, yeah, with the new thing, I will be delivering that something and you have to deliver. Uh, so, but it's important to have the business backing you up when you jump on, uh, on Agile. Um, as soon as you have that, and then you need to decide if you want to be cross-functional for real. A lot of people, a lot of colleagues throughout the industry, they said, yeah, yeah, we are cross-functional. We have front-end, back-end, QA. No, you have a very nice product and, product and development team, which, which, is, which is fine. But if you want to be cross-functional, you clearly need to bring different stakeholders on your table. So you need to have people from customer support in your squad. You need to have people from sales. You need to have people from marketing. Uh, <coughs> this is just an example. The tree depends on the theme that your squads. Uh, I am leading product and tech for a B2C in Gumtree, and I have uh, four squads reporting into me. Uh, every squad is a different mix. The Motors squad has people from 
uh, dealers, uh, people selling packages to dealers. Uh, the jobs code uh, have in it people that are selling packages to recruiters. Um, other schools, they have customer support people in it. How do you create a school out of a, such a diverse scenario? Uh, you give them OKRs. So we, we, we use OKR, so we, we, you give them objectives, uh, which is a very high level um, alignment tool that says, you are the job squad, I am expecting you to become, uh, I mean, the, 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 the second or the first uh, website for recruiters, whatever, whatever is the objective. Now, I, 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 ma I made the objective very high level, but it can be a little more down to earth, like, I don't know, we want to increase um, recruiters on, on, on the platform. Um, the real piece is you need to empower your squads. And that's something that even last time I was uh, with the guys of the Agile Roundabout, I, 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 I dreamed a lot on this because it's super important that you empower your squads. The moment you give the objective, the moment you assign the KRs, and the KRs are the key results that will align the squad. So key results are not KPIs. Key results are not KPIs. So it's not a measure of success, it's a, a tool to align people towards a specific goal. If you're working in the job squad, uh, your KR may be, you want to increase 10%, don't, don't be fooled by the, the number, but 10% uh, job seekers on the platform uh, or recruiters. At that, at that point, the squad, as a cross-functional squad, needs to design the initiatives. Uh, and that's where their, their empowerment kicks in. Because people, they say, okay, I, I, I hear you. We, you want to increase that specific metric. Those are the activities, those are the initiatives that I will be doing in the next three months, two months, whatever. And then you have fortnightly check-ins that say, this is what we're doing, this is the direction in which we're going, this is the thing that we deliver. And that's the real empowerment. Empowerment means accountability. So I'm giving you clear objectives, I'm setting a clear level of expectations. This is what I'm expecting, what the business is expecting from you, uh, and I'm expecting you to deliver it. The alignment is coming from the KRs. The KRs are saying, I'm expecting you to contribute towards this specific goal, and not another one. And again, those are not KPIs, but those are key results, so those are alignment tools. So if the key result is increased 10%, a specific metric, that doesn't mean that if I eat 8% is a failure. Not at all. It's a success because it means that you steered in that direction. Okay? It's always very important to at least try to say 10% or whatever because you need to be measurable and don't, don't, don't even get me started on the smart definition of, of a metric, but I mean, you know what I mean? But you need to set expectation. Again, expectations are super important. I'm expecting this level of contribution you contributed a little more, a little less, good. We are on the same page. That's exactly what this is all about. Uh, just to rephrase, objectives and key results are not KPIs. You don't judge success on the KR, you judge alignment, you give alignment. So this is the first part of the journey. So now we have your fancy and nice team working on OKRs. How can you do that across a business that has like in our case, five, six different streams. I manage four squads with four different themes. Motors, jobs, uh, properties, and uh, advertisement technology. How can you drive alignment with that? And, and that's where, of course, uh, SAFE or any kind of scaled up version of, of Agile kicks in without going much into, into the details, because uh, this is not a lecture about this, and I might not even be the expert on this, but still, uh, what I'd like to point out is that you see a pattern emerging. So this, this is, again, this is a fractal thing. So if you look at the small size, so the team size, you scale it up, so you, you, you zoom out a little, and you, you do the same thing on the program level and on the portfolio level. Uh, I'm on your same page, so it's very hard to elaborate on program and portfolio because every single corporation on the planet using SAFE is doing this in a different way because it really depends on your leadership team on, on other stuff. The point that I would like to point, uh, the thing that I would like to point out is it's just the same thing, so it's, it's the same process. Um, why is 
is this is a very cool tool because it allows you to, to align across different teams and different business units. This is super, super info important. What I like about SAFE uh, is that protects somehow the focus of your of your squads because you you, you set a sort of a, of a direction and then the squad will be delivering against that direction. The squad doesn't need to go, doesn't need to do tangents in order to, to find a way. And uh, I think it's very good uh, in terms of connecting the people with the why. So when you, when you do when you do the, the, the demos and, and that, that that's very important because every time you, you 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 disconnect part of your organization, then you need to reconnect it. That's super important. Otherwise, people will be start to doing something different from from what you expect. There are also some caveats, uh, and that's that's even in my experience. So it can become very very top down. The moment you decide which is your PI, what is in your train, uh, if you're not if you're not very uh, very cautious in in, in in communicating and creating a, 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 a process that is also not just top down but bottom up also, it can just become waterfall that says, okay, guys, this is what it is supposed to be in next in the next train. And that can be okay for, for, for I don't know, maybe a few few trains, but in general it's very dangerous because people, would, they will just say, okay, I, w I will just wait to receive um, uh, I mean, just the list of things that needs to be delivered and we'll be delivering them. Uh, might look like a slow down version of everything else because you invest potentially a sprint, if not two sprints uh, for, for the IP. Um, but, I mean, as, as we saw in the previous presentation, the opportunity to do hackathons, the opportunity to increase your, uh, uh, to work on your platform is something that is very hard to sell to the stakeholders, like, I mean, management team, because they want, ev they want new feature every single sprint. Uh, but, but, but again, if you can prove that value, then it's an easy sale. Um, and it can be somehow dangerous if the company is not at the right size. So you, you, you need to be very cautious in when to create uh, this kind of structural organization because it can become too big and too much in terms of rituals, in terms of how many people do you need, how many product managers, how many agile coaches you do need. Um, those are the risks. So in general, if you go back to what I said, I mean, uh, the journey started from the waterfall um, of how eBay NECG was maybe eight years ago, going through the process of embracing Agile, going through the process of starting cross-functional squads, you can then scale it up. The constant thing is this, this, this basic movement from the small to the big. And actually, you keep doing the same thing, but on different contexts. And then that's something that I'm doing, I'm adopting with my squad, this is what I call the fractal OKR. So there's no reason why you should not use OKRs on different levels. So I just had a few one-to-ones this morning with some of my product managers, and I used OKRs on the individual level. So I said, okay, this is the objective, setting the expectations, let's figure out together the KRs. Your objectives is, I don't know, um, I, I do know, of course, <laughs> it was um, uh, creating a more rigid structure around some agile processes for, for whatever reason. Of course, I won't be elaborating now. But, uh, and the KR uh, is something that we'll be deciding together next week or in a couple of weeks. But that's the process that I would like to ignite. And you can do that on the individual level. You can scale it up on the squad level. It's the same. This is the objective. Expectations. We will work together through the expectation. We design something that is good for us in terms of delivery, and then we scale it up. And then exactly, it, it is exactly the same thing. So it's the process, setting the expectation, discussing around which is the expected outcome, and then giving the empowerment to the people to execute against those, um, those OKRs. Uh, that was my journey. <laughs>